Temple kneels and then smack for game. Easy. What is up all you beautiful people? It is I, Akami TCG, back here with a brand new video. Thank you everyone for supporting my Rika Fairy stuff, my Rika Fairy deck profile, and my Rika Fairy replays. I've been spending the whole past week just trying to figure out how to make the deck a lot better, just tweaking it and trying to understand the deck as completely as I can. And I know this is relatively common, but I've made like a wonky, almost competitive adaptation of the Rika Fairy Arrow Mages deck. So we splash the Arrow Mages in there. And I'm just gonna go right into it. I'm just gonna show you guys how good this deck can be. What potential this deck has. It's very close to competitive, not quite there yet. But if this video does get 20 likes, then I will post the competitive deck profile for Rika Fairy Arrow Mages. Anyways, let's go right into it. If you are entered into the contest for the last video, the winners will be posted down below for a free pack. If you want to win a free pack, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and there will be a question that's outlined somewhere in this video. It, it can be at any point, it could be 5 seconds from now, but the question will pop up for 5 seconds. If you answer it correctly, then you'll be entered in the raffle, and you can get a chance to win a free pack, and the winners will be announced at the next video. Let's go right into it. So I am going first. For a good couple of these. This deck is made to go first. We do not really want to go second with this deck. <laughs> it's really, really, really hard for this deck to break boards. You can argue you can make a deck catered around going second with this deck with evenly matches and lightning storms, etc. But with Adamantipators on the rise and them making pretty strong negate boards with a whole bunch of shenanigans, including spell and trap negations, it'd be best just to have this deck go first. And then siding out to go second. So Lone Fire into Lone Fire to Lone Fire. I am doing this to thin out the deck. Obviously I have no idea what I'm going up against. I did play Petal here and he did have some sort of delay. So I'm pretty sure he had Ash or a Ghost Ogre. We don't know what it is. Ghost Ogre is very popular right now due to, you know, uh, what is it? All the new field spells that are on the rise. And also I believe it's good against Eldritch. Please correct me if I am wrong about that. I have not played against too many Eldritch decks. So I summon... Snowdrop and Mudan. So we go for the standard bread and butter play. Still the same as before. We want to get Teardrop or Alsei. One of the others, depending on the situation. Alsei more so for going second, Teardrop more so for going first. It just really depends on the situation. So Mudan is going to grab... I think did I grab Sheet or Tranquility? One or the other. Um, since I'm going blind and also I have no idea what the opponent is playing, most of the time I grab Sheet instead because it is some form of interruption against your opponent's plays. Since you really don't know. But if I do know what the opponent is playing and I know that they don't have like really really good like combo starters or stuff that I can snuff out, then I would get Tranquility instead just for recursion plays. So I go Glamour, grab Hellbore, just in case they target I have no idea what the opponent has. If they have some sort of targeting mechanic against my Teardrop, then there is a way for me to go around it. And I have Rika Tranquility and Rika Sheet, so it's pretty good. Uh, only thing that could kill it right here is if somebody Gamma sails me. But so whatever. Normal summon Cyber Dragon Core, I let that through. There is no threat to him adding a Cyber Rev System to the hand. Summons Alvarage, Rev System. Cyber Dragon Core can only activate once per turn, or one effect per turn. Goes in a Verte Anaconda. I know he's gonna get Dragoon Red Eyes, or I don't know what he's gonna get. Maybe he's using Overload Fusion and uh, doing something with that. But I didn't wanna risk it, so I'm using Teardrop to tribute his Anaconda. He uses Ghost Ogre. Unfortunately, that does not. Doesn't negate the effect, but since it's going to kill my teardrop anyways, I'm going to use Tranquility to tribute my teardrop to get myself a snowdrop and a lone fire black. The only reason why I'm doing that instead of snowdrop and teardrop is teardrop without any materials doesn't give me any extra like fluff on the field, so to speak. If I get snowdrop and lone fire, your opponent has to try to kill both because Snowdrop on the field is problematic because I can make instantly any rank 8 that I want that's a plant so I'll say or teardrop but if they leave Lone Fire on the field I can grab whatever I want so it leaves your opponent in a little bit of a bind and they have to figure out whether or not oh let's kill the Lone Fire so he doesn't get whatever he wants from the deck or do I kill the Snowdrop so I can prevent him from getting teardrop next turn 
Either way, it puts more pressure on the opponent than the Exceed in Snowdrop. I know the Exceed has high defense, but it doesn't really help too much in this case. See, so Monster Reborn is the Verte. He did summon it successfully, so he's able to do that. Monster Reborn is the Verte. I'm not gonna let him go through with that, so I just activate Rikashi. Uh, I didn't tribute to grab his Verte because it's literally no point me tributing because he can't run over either of these with just Verte anyways, and he already normal summon. He sets back row. I'm wary of the back row. Petal comes back, always comes back, but it's one of the best cards in the deck. I draw into Mudon, doesn't matter. Lone Fire. And I was gonna go for Evil Thorn here so I can extend my play really hard, but he knows he uses Ash Blossom, so it's whatever. Now he only has one card in his hand. Not a big deal breaker. This deck can go through a lot of hand traps once it has its gears turning just a little bit. So Rika Petal, I'm gonna add what was it? Mudon to the hand. Or Erica, because I already had Mudan in the hand, I drew off of it. So Erica's gonna give me the buff that I need. So this time I go into Alsa. The reason why I go into Alsa here is Verte Anaconda does not prove as a major threat. Like if he had something to negate my summon, like let's say like bottomless, um, etc., it wouldn't really hurt that much, so to speak. But since he has one set, and this card is literally practically nothing on the field, I just have to get rid of it this turn, no problem. Then I'm gonna use Alsa. Detach one, call the wrong card on purpose, so I can get Alsei's effect to activate. Target his card, put it to the top of his deck. The reason why I'm putting it to the top of his deck is if he said it, there's must there must be a reason why he just said it. Um, I will gamble 50-50. If it's a trap, then it's whatever. Not a big deal, because I'll still run over the Verte anyways. So no biggie. Top of the deck to kind of lock him into like, yeah, you can't draw any more cards. So I run over his card. He draws into Lightning Storm. After his Lightning Storm, whatever, not a big deal. He sets one card. I have no idea what it is, so you have to be very wary about setting cards. And since that pedal comes back, obviously, I draw Imperm, which is extra. I didn't really need it. But I go into my own Verte. And here's the spice, alright? I go into Verte. Neos Fusion into Rainbow Neos. Rainbow Neos. I mill one to put his old graveyard back into the deck because. The um, Sabbath Dragon Corn in his graveyard is going to put in some work, so I don't want any of that to happen. And I gamble here. I, instead of attacking with Nemo, Neos, I attack with Verte and Econa first, just to see if I can deal extra damage. Not a big deal. So he gets hers, he gets Cyber Dragon. I attack 4500, boom. Set the Imperm Pass, really all I can do. He special summons Cyber Dragon, sets Overflow, attacks into my Verte. Not a big deal, honestly. So all I have to do is attack for the game, so there's no point and no reason for me to do anything extra because that trap could be anything, could be a turn to tribute. So Rainbow Neos to get rid of his back row, it's Overflow, which would destroy Neos, but since I have Neos Fusion in the graveyard off of Predator Plant, Verte, Anaconda, it protects my Neos and damage goes through. Game. <laughs> That's simple guys. It's really good. I still have 4 cards in hand. Two interruptions, assuming I had a plant monster on the field. I did not summon at all that turn. And also the reason why Petal didn't come back is Rainbow Neos is not a uh, plant monster. So be very careful. I am running this engine. And sometimes I do draw Neos or Rainbow Dragon. Not too big of a deal. This card is really, really good for this deck because it helps it go second a lot better. But if you use either Snowdrop or Rika Petal, like any of their... The first effect, so Rika Petal to search and then Snowdrop's effect to special summon itself and a plant monster, then you cannot summon Rainbow Neos that turn. You must figure out another reason, another way to summon Rainbow Neos. Because Rainbow Neos, along with Rainbow Dragon and Elements of Hero Neos, are the only non plants in this deck. Uh, obviously, that will be replaced with Dragoon of Red Eyes once the deck's updated. So second game, this is a really really brick hand because if he just ashes my petal, I just die. <laughs> but thankfully he did not have ash. Again, the snowdrop. Do the bread and butter play. Snowdrop into teardrop. Put it in defense. The reason why you put it in defense, it has the same amount of attack and defense, and you don't want it to get lightning storm. Bottom line. If you want them to lightning storm, they'll hit your back row, but you still have an interruption here. So it just does help a lot. I have no idea what he's playing, but you know, set 2, set 1 is not good. He summons Blackstone and Legend. I do not want him to summon Red Eyes Black Dragon. So here I tribute it with Teardrop. 
Blackstone Legend goes back to the hand. <laughs> that card is such good recursion. And he goes to end phase, the pedal comes back. I'm using pedal, or a teardrop, or the tribute monster off the bat. Pedal, I'm going to search for a snowdrop, and there I block myself the plant, so I can't go for the e-hero play, but that's fine. So here I go into another all say. The same again with the whole trap situation, spells and trap situation. Um, if they do this, and that means they usually have a pretty not so optimal first turn. So I'm gonna put it put one of these cards back at the top of the deck, doesn't matter. But luckily I also know an arrow mage card that's really good. The one that special summons itself from the graveyard, so it's good for later on. So I, I luckily put his quaking back to the top, I attack with both. And now he's relatively stuck here. Pedal comes back, and then because he just set that card over there, obviously I'm using All Say. Put that back to the top. And get Erica, just in case I need to do a little bit of extra damage. Attack with All Say, and attack with Teardrop for a game. Simple as that. Number three. So this was actually a relatively hard matchup. Um, there's a lot of parts in this matchup where if I messed up or if I didn't do X, Y, or Z correctly, then I would have lost the game for sure, 100%. Going first, Lone Fire, Lone Fire, Lone Fire. Um, this deck is also susceptible to Nibiru if you choose to go that route. If you just go Snowdrop, if you normal summon, uh, pedal, and then go Snowdrop, Mudan, and go into Teardrop, it's only 4 summons. So you're safe there. You could definitely consider that if you're going, um, what is it? Second, at a different point of the game, especially in games 2 and 3. So you can just play around Nibiru that way. He's very smart, he goes over it, so I feel like I don't know if this was a fluke, but Ghost Orgreen, this was the correct play, so now I don't have a monster, so I cannot summon Snowdrop. And that was my normal summon, my Lone Fire. So Snowdrop, one for one, Evil Thorn into Spore, just to set up for the next turn. I really can't do much here, honestly, like, I'm stuck. Because <laughs> Snowdrop can't summon, because I don't have another plant monster in the hand. But I did have Tranquility and Sheet, so I have one Interruption and one Call of the Haunted, so to speak. For a guitar, he's going to special summon Mikes. This card's really good. He gives him a second normal summon this turn. Goes into Nova. Okay, Nova here. Anybody goes into Cyber Dragon Nova. Clearly, 9 times out of 10, they're going to go to Infinity and mess me up. So, here I new Sheet. Tribute my Spore. Take his Nova so he can't summon Infinity. Here he can use his Death Spot 4. Luckily, he had it in his hand. He attacks over Nova. So what Despot 4 does is he can send a Despot from Death to the Graveyard. So that's 6, right? It's a level 6. Uh, 6 times 500 is 3000. So this becomes a 3500 beater, but for the rest of the turn I take no battle damage. So it's fine. But he special summons 2 Despots from the Graveyard. Um, luckily they are different numbers. I don't know if he runs additional Novas. He does not anyway, so he was kind of stuck there. That one Nova was his only way to Infinity. And he really can't do much else here. I mean, he has literally all of these are different numbers, and there's no tuner, so he really can't do anything here. So he's kind of stuck with a kind of a spaghetti board. He pops. He uses Death Spot Five because he summoned it off of four to destroy my back row. I cannot chain to it because this is all happening during damage step as Death Spot Four is activating. Just if any of you are wondering. So pedal comes back during the end phase. Pedal is going to activate. Getting myself a Mudon, so I can just continue going off. So Snowdrop into Mudon. And then do the same thing. This time I summon Teardrop. All Say isn't too good here because I don't want him summoning anything. The only thing I don't want to hit into is Death Spot 4 because Death Spot 4 will always be bigger than my card most of the time. So Death Spot 4. So now at this point, this is where the spice comes in, okay? I special summon Spore from the Graveyard by Banishing Lone Fire Blossom. Now it's going to be a level 4. I did not normal summon yet. This is all main phase 1. Normal summon Rika Petal, go into Aroma Seraphy Rosemary. This is going to give me a buff to my monsters once my life points is lower. I mean, higher than his. So Teardrop's going to attack, and all my monsters going to gain 500 attack. Base, and then boom. Attack both. Set my Rika Trincody, I'm good to go. 
So the Pendulum summons only one because he only has one spot open in his extra monster zone. He summons that spot six. He's gonna put my monster to defense, go into Platinum Gadget. I could retribute it here with Teardrop, but there's no reason to tribute this Platinum Gadget because there is no threat right now. So I'm just gonna wait until he attacks and then I'll use Teardrop to hit his Platinum Gadget. So end phase. So I'm gonna activate two effects. Tranquility to tribute my monster to special summon two monsters. So Snowdrop and... I mean not Snowdrop. Yes, yeah, Snowdrop. And Rosemary and then Teardrop's gonna activate to get 200 buff. Rika Petal is still end phase. It's going to activate as well. So now I'm pretty good. At this point, I don't use Rika Petal's effect because I want to use Verte. So Verte, pay 2000, go into Rainbow Neos, and then smack the game. Easy. Perfect. Here's the next replay. We got two more. So I'm playing against Pendulum Magician. I'm, this time I am going second, uh, so I'm terrified. He activates gate zero, so I'm worried about board. So he does audition and I have no idea what's going on. So Purple Poison, you do not want to kill Purple Poison because it will destroy a face-up card on the field from either player's side. So here I just need the basic bread and butter. Snowdrop, this is going to be extra play. Okay, Snowdrop into Lone Fire Blossom, okay? Lone Fire Blossom, Lone Fire, Lone Fire into Evil Thorn. Evil Thorn into more plus. So here I activate Aroma Gardening before I summon the Arrow Mage card, which means I'll get a buff, I'll get a thousand buff, or a thousand life points. Jasmine will trigger because I gain life points while she's on the field. This lets me search for Laurel, and Laurel says if I have more life points than my opponent, I can special summon it from my hand. Activate Jasmine's effect, tributing Laurel to get Mudon, and because Mudon was special summoned by a plant monster's effect, that's going to get me... Oh yeah, chain link 1, chain link 2, there's two trigger effects happening here. You can choose the order in which this happens, because these two things happen simultaneously, so you would ideally put chain link 2 as Laurel, and chain link 1 as Mudon, so your opponent cannot ash it to get Rikashit as more interruption because I know he's playing pendulums. And then make a teardrop. Should be his monster. Smack 448. Set the imperm, set the sheet. I'm in really, really, really good shape. Okay, so gonna special summon Dark Worm. Gonna go into Dark Rebellion. I should have waited. I really should have waited until he goes into battle phase, but for whatever reason, I just chose not to, and I just tributed his monster off the spot. That could have cost me that duel, honestly, but that's something to keep in mind. Now he has no monsters on the field, he can freely special summon Dark Worm. He's going to attack over Jasmine, but since Jasmine has a continuous effect, if I have more life points than the opponent, then none of my plant monsters can be destroyed the battle. So, that's fine. Rika Petal comes back. Angelica is going to activate, I gain 800 life points, then Angelica, I mean, <laughs> then Jasmine is going to activate, I can get any plant monster from the deck to my hand. Angelica special summons, activate gardening, go into Verte, I did not activate Petal this turn, so I'm free to go. Verte to go into Rainbow Neos, Rainbow Neos activating his effect to send a Aroma Gardening to the graveyard to send all his spells and trap cards, so including his pendulum cards, back into the deck. And now it's GG. Absolutely. <laughs> very, very good there. And last replay. I know this one's gonna be really short, guys. Just a heads up. So he plays Pot of Extravagance. So, right off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure he's playing some sort of Eldritch deck. He has an Imperm face down. That's what I expected to be face down, so I was trying to play around it. So, I go into Glamour. And his Ash right here is the correct play because I was going to get Petal. Now I don't have Petal, so I don't have Recursion for later on, and I have no way to get the Petal. Unless I make a really cheeky play here. So Mudon's gonna activate. Uh, Chainlink 2, Chainlink 1, I should have activated in reverse order, just for future references. Chainlink 1, Chainlink 2. Get Rika Sheet, and Laurel is gonna have me gain 500 life points. Go into Alse. And he honestly should have imperm me there, so it doesn't go back to the top of his deck. At least I'm 
pretty sure that's how that works. Or at least he could have imperm me as soon as I activated the first effect. That way he can have something, possibly something to draw the next turn. So I attack for 23. I set 2 and... He could have imperm the Mudan too, he could have imperm the Snowdrop. There was a lot of options or things he could have done there. But maybe his hand was just so bad he just decided to just kind of scoop there. So he summons Gamma Seal, summons Gamma Seal, and then scoop. Anyways, that was the video. Hope y'all enjoyed this Rika Fairy Error Mage Onslaught. I've been having a blast with this deck. I've been learning a lot uh, from playing this deck. And I love playing these kinds of rogue decks because people don't see it coming. It's just really funny. Anyways, if you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell notification if you wish. And if you are entering in the pack contest, please comment down below. I'm Akemi TCG. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay beautiful, alright? See you guys. The world ends now.